a lot of technology that we rely on right now is disposable. And that's both expensive for the environment and expensive for our future. So what we try to do is we try to balance the value that a product creates as well as the overall cost to make it in terms of materials, labor, pollution that it generates when you make it and pollution that it generates over the lifetime of its use. That whole integrated concept gives us a different approach to developing products and developing technologies. And a sustainable economy and a sustainable society has really got to be our goal. We don't want to necessarily give up our standard of living or our way of life. What we want to do is we want to look at new products, new technologies, live the way we live today with only some modest changes and be able to make sure that we can keep that lifestyle for our children. We live in the early stages of historic change in the way we organize the Earth's energy. The Industrial Age, which began with carrying coal from Newcastle several hundred years ago, is now winding down in the oil fields of the Middle East. But a global production of oil is likely to peak as early as 2010 or as late as 2037. Somebody just says, ah, we got three times more than we really think. So everybody goes, oh, well, that's all right. We got 100 years worth. Ah, I'll be dead by then. Okay. Fuel up. <laughs> How much we might have left shouldn't really be the driving force here. Hydrogen, the lightest and most abundant element in the universe, is the next great energy revolution. The key issue we face in developing a hydrogen economy is where do we get it from? Currently, if you look at the plans for hydrogen economies and such, the hydrogen was going to be produced from fossil fuel. That is an interesting and viable direction for some elements, but we've got to make sure that we have a sustainable way of fueling those fuel cells. Otherwise, we're, all we've done is traded the internal combustion engine for a fuel cell and an electric drive for which we still want a gallon of gasoline. Unfortunately, production of hydrogen from fossil fuels emits pollutants and consumes non-renewable resources. We're eventually going to end up with things that we just can no longer deal with, like in fuel cell technology. If you're looking at very, very toxic oxides being the byproduct, sure, you may be saving some greenhouse gases now, but if you have no way of safely storing the byproducts that come from the product after five or ten years of use, then you really have only moved the problem into a different form. You haven't really solved anything. All you've done is said, oh, look, I've cut down my greenhouse gases. Oh, geez, now I've got a landfill that's super toxic. So we've got to make sure that whenever we look at things, we look at a holistic approach, all the way from what's involved in designing it and making it, what will it require to use it, and how can we recycle it later. And without that kind of closed-loop approach to the technology, what we're going to end up with is a society that is unsustainable.